Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. I'm in my attic again. I've converted some new things. I've got a light bulb. I've got some pictures behind me. Um, it's a good little setup. But that aside, that's what's changed. What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about another careers video. And specifically, I'm going to talk about how you can move from a qualified accountant role, so you're doing audit at a professional firm, into a non-typical accountancy role. So be it, say, a commercial business partner or a equity research type role. So I'm just going to give my advice on how I think you could make this transition and a few things that might aid you in doing this, because I'm aware that a lot of people study to be a qualified accountant, but maybe don't aren't interested in actually preparing sets of accounts and actually continuing going down this line. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Hopefully it's useful. With that being said, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so for full disclosure, I started at PwC as an auditor where I qualified as an accountant before moving into a finance analyst role in an FP&A team. Then I moved from that company to another company where I'm now a commercial business partner. So I've moved around a fair bit um, in the sort of 10 years that I've worked. So I understand to some degree what it takes to move outside of the role you're currently doing and try and show that you have the skill set needed to move into a different type of role. For those interested, the reason I changed uh, those roles in large part was to move away from say looking at historic financial information and preparing accounts to looking into more forecasting and understanding how the business is operating and where it's going in the future. I'm very much a people person as well which is partly uh, I don't know if you've seen one of these other videos but I talk about how I'm a wedding photographer on some weekend so started that to try and have a more sort of creative output. So that being said I wanted to find a role still in finance that had some more sort of interaction uh, particularly with say the operational teams so that's sort of why I moved into a commercially focused finance role now as a newly qualified accountant you do have a large array of jobs that are available to you outside of the accounting industry see if you're starting in audit or you're just qualified and don't like what you are doing don't feel like you have to move away completely from accounting to find something that you like to do since the industry is quite varied I've worked with a lot of people who don't really like the sort of process part of the role and have as such just moved into a completely different industry altogether but I think that's a mistake you know I mean, maybe it's not they might enjoy it more but I, I feel like once you're qualified and you've put all that work in it'd be good to sort of compound that knowledge by at least staying within a, a, an industry which is relatively similar to what you've started because that's what's going to warrant you to get a better salary and if you move completely outside of accounting and finance then um, you're going to have to start from scratch again building up that uh, knowledge base. Now the reason why you have such a large array of jobs once you've become a qualified accountant and say you've worked in audit or otherwise is that there are loads of transferable skills and knowledge that you'll have that you can apply to a num number of uh, other jobs. Uh, what is definitely important is that you don't sell yourself short and think that you don't have the skills necessary to move into different roles. For instance you'll understand what financial information and metrics are. You'll be able to produce a set of financial statements which has broad implications throughout business. Uh, you have a grounding in corporation tax, understanding business finance, you'll be able to work under pressure, uh, you have client facing experience, you'll have managed more like junior members of teams, you know, and really all these are applicable to a large number of roles outside of what you are doing now. This skill and knowledge will obviously lend themselves directly to say corporate reporting roles, preparing sets of accounts, internal audit roles outside of say the professional firm you're working in, say finance analyst roles. So those are the ones that sort of directly link to the job that you're doing, you know, you work with when you working as say like an auditor or in a professional firm so obviously moving outside of a professional firm you could directly go for that kind of role but what we're talking about in this video is how you go for roles outside of you know that general specific accountancy job and I'll speak about the two roles I talked about in the intro so the, say you wanted to move straight into say like a business partnering role or you wanted to move into say like an equity analyst role now obviously everybody's experience is different uh, so I'm going to speak quite broadly about what you can bring to the table say if you have an interview or what sort of things you want to be thinking about even before you've applied for these kind of roles. So given that I'm a commercial business partner um, I obviously have a lot more experience when talking about this but really why it's more challenging to get this role straight out of becoming qualified and just dealing with financial statements is that it has a lot more commercial 
uh, elements uh, to it. And also you're working with a lot of people who aren't uh, so financially trained. So you have to have a very good grounding in finance to then be able to break down information that you've learned uh, working with other commercial teams. So you have to understand the topic more broadly. So what does commercial factors actually mean? Well, there are two parts really to how I, how I see commercial factors being broken down. Firstly, is that the metrics that you use to analyze data are separate to the, say the financial statement information you've learned about. What do I mean by this? Well, in financial statements, you'll have things like profit margins, operating costs, balance sheet accruals, prepayments. You know, you'll have things like days sales and payable outstanding days, which basically means how long it takes you to pay suppliers or how long it takes you to receive cash. You'll have bad debt provisions, revenue recognition policies. You know, these are the sort of things that you deal with when you're qualifying or if you do an audit or working in a professional firm, doing that sort of thing. So these are the metrics that you use specifically for accounting when preparing a set of accounts. And these are broadly universal across the industry. So regardless of what company you're analyzing, you can sort of understand those financial metrics. Now, the metrics that you use in commercial environments are going to be more specific to the company that it operates in. It may be that you have things like customer retention, volume driven metrics, customer satisfaction, cu uh, commission rates, delivery times, credit risks, you know, yields on different product types, utilization metrics, things that you would broadly expect to see in sort of KPIs on the company's balance scorecard, uh, which is something you deal with if you studied accounting and finance. And that's the first element of trying to get your head around how you could apply for these roles and how you should be thinking uh, in terms of what you'll be analyzing in these sort of roles. You have to sort of evidence that you're able to think critically about what drives the business and not just from a financial aspect, from a commercial sensitive way to say, you know, it's because of the customer retention, which is driving the profit, or it's because of the different product lines and the geographical areas in which those products are sold, which is why the yields are higher um, and which is driving growth. You know, these are the ways you need to be thinking about it, which is a little bit more difficult to prove when you are just dealing with, you know, becoming a qualified accountant and just have a grasp of the financial statements. It's more difficult to prove that you have that experience and the best way I could say to uh, evidence this is obviously by is by simply doing the obvious things like reading the news, reading about the industry that you want to move into, what are the sort of metrics and ways that the 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 company breaks down how they're performing. Don't just look at the financial statements when you're going for a job interview, but look at the sort of presentation packs in the investor relations page of that company and see what the CFO and CEO, and more specifically the CEO, is um, is using to suggest that they're performing better. You know, what what are the criteria that they're using to show that they're meeting uh, that they they're growing as a business? And you know, they as you know, results quarters and uh, result you know year end results. They often present a sort of presentation pack, which just basically tells you the sort of things that you need to be looking for. Secondly, when you work in a commercial role, the type of work that you do and the people you speak to is going to be vastly different to when you're just working in a specific accountancy based role. You see, you have to think about things like process improvements, you know, business cases, you're obviously dealing with business partnering. So, you know, resolving any issues from a financial perspective that is aiming to assist the commercial managers or the operational teams that you're business partnering with. So the way you think about problems and the core of what you're trying to do has changed. You aren't talking about the level of accrual you should raise anymore. You're talking about how you can try and resolve issues by using different systems that you're maybe not familiar with. You have to talk to a, a large range of people from across the business. It's more of like a problem solving uh, you know, every day being a little bit different than the last rather than very systematic every month end you post the same journals and you get very used to it within a couple of months. You see it's, it's a much more broad range of skills and I guess the way you have to evidence this if you're going for a job interview is you have to show that you have this broad range of skills and this adaptability and this problem solving and try and find the things which you know in your role that you're doing that um, maybe isn't so standardized with every single audit or every single uh, problem, you know, things that stand out as specific cases where you've had to think outside of the box to deal with a problem. So that's a sort of commercial business partnering role and a general advice in terms of what the job is and how you can sort of evidence that and what you need to sort of be looking for. You obviously need to have a very good grounding in finance, understand the financial statements, that's a given. 
and also be able to really dig into the detail of why things have moved the way that they have. You know, why you not just that the revenues moved and how it's geographically moved, but what happened within that geographical area to cause that revenue to move. That's what you need to be thinking about a lot more critical about that sort of commercial aspect. And it might be that you have to analyze things that are a lot more assumptions based. You know, you might be thinking about macroeconomic things, about what happened with government policy and that sort of thing, which is driving the numbers, which is a lot more based in assumptions and but it's it's more about evidencing that you're able to think critically about that than saying something uh, in a job interview that maybe is you know directly correct you just want to or might not actually be the cause but at least you're able to think outside the box in terms of generating ideas so that's the commercial business partnering role and how you can sort of move into that directly from, say, doing sort of like an accountancy finance qualification and looking for a more commercially focused role. So the next one I'm going to talk about is equity analysis role. Now, I've had loads of questions like, how do you move into this sort of area on my channel? Obviously, I don't deal with this area, but I do on this channel analyze a lot of financial statements and talk about companies and shares and... Um, investing and that's something that I am very much interested in so from that perspective I feel like I can uh, sort of guide you uh, in terms of how you can start thinking about trying to get something uh, in those kind of roles. Now I say this is probably the most challenging as well area to move into specifically because it seems like everybody else uh, has an interest in this. Now you really want to dig into why you're interested in moving into say an equity based role um, obviously that feels like there's a more prestige and it pays better and bonuses but those are always the worst reasons to actually move into a role like that the best reason is that you're genuinely interested in investing and how a business operates and what makes the best companies the best and what's driving those factors and you need to constantly be thinking about that it's almost like understanding all the commercial factors I just talked about in the last section and more because you know it's there's a lot less jobs going and it's a lot more competitive to get those jobs now the first piece of advice is that you need to be reading the news so preferably something like the Financial Times and reading it every single day and becoming very astute at understanding financial information within the Financial Times and you know picking up trends and reasons why certain things drive other factors you know there's a lot of cause causality and links between what's happening in the news and what's happening with share prices and uh, different businesses and what sort of hurdles can be caused by uh, you know uh, changes in regulatory environments so that's something that you definitely want to be doing like I said before sort of generally take an interest in what that role involves and start doing it now you know if you want to become an equity an analyst start buying shares start staking your own money up because that sure as hell will you know when you start losing money from buying your first few shares make you realize there's a lot more to it and makes you hone in what is the driver um, that's causing some stocks to perform better than others. You know, start following fund managers and understanding their ethos of why they've picked the companies that they're picking. There's so much information out there about how you can do that, free information, lots of books out there that you should be reading that will give you, hone your skills into what sort of factors you wanna be looking at and what metrics you need to use. You need to understand and evidence that, the, you know, start buying shares Build up, say, an eight stock portfolio now. You know, you don't even have to, you know, you could use something like eToro and buy shares and not even have to use transaction fees and just sort of have a flutter, even if you don't have that much money. So you have a thousand pounds, say, okay, you don't want to have transaction fees because that'll eat into that. Get an eToro account or a Trading212 account and basically build up a 10 stock portfolio where every single stock in that portfolio you understand the share price and you understand with a single paragraph exactly why you bought that share you want to understand what is the return on capital employed of those shares that you've purchased what is the free cash flow yield what's the free cash flow growth what is the profit margins gross profit margins what is the regulatory environment that would cause this business to not perform well what are the risks, opportunities, all this stuff that, you know, you can do that right now. So if you're going for that role, there's going to be loads of people who apply for that role who are applying for it probably because they want to earn 
um, a fat wad. No, <laughs> they, they want to earn a lot of money, they want to get bonuses and stuff, which is the wrong reasons, and you want to evidence that you're going for that job for the right reasons, which is that you're generally interested in the businesses and investing in good businesses. Now, you want to be knowing, obviously, all the critical commercial factors that I previously talked about, and you know, if I'm if I was thinking about, you know, going for a role myself, I feel a lot more confident now, now that I've even got this YouTube channel where I can evidence that I'm obviously interested in analyzing businesses and I can think cr critically and commercially about different factors within businesses and really I mean, I imagine if you went for a job, you really have to use your own experience. And if you're working for a company now, say you've moved out of audit or a professional firm, and you're moving into a company, do you understand everything within that company that drives that company's performance? Because if you're in a very accountancy-based role, it's very easy to just get hone in on the detail of, you know, posting journals and dealing with the day-to-day -day life. And, you know, in an equity analyst-type interview, they're probably not going to ask you about you know, give me an instance where you've had to deal with a difficult person, how did you resolve it? Like, I couldn't imagine that really being the issue because you're not gonna be dealing with a lot of people when you're analyzing businesses. They're gonna to wanna to know, have you thought critically about the business that you're at least working in now? So if you're working in a company or you're interested in a certain industry, so you are in a professional firm, you're interested in industry, or you're working in that company and in that industry and looking for a change, do you at least know all the kind of metrics within that industry that drive that business? So you can say, look, I'm, I'm at least interested in the company that I'm working in and I know all the metrics and what this business needs to do to improve and how can, you know, give me two op give me two opportunities of what this business could do to boost its revenue stream and what hurdles are in its way you know those are the sort of things that i could imagine you want to be thinking about when moving into those roles so there we are that's it hopefully that's helpful that's how i think about it that's how i plan if i was moving into a equity analyst role and thought about the interview process um, obviously there's going to be a lot of interviews it's um, there's going to be a lot of tasks that you have probably have to do when analyzing businesses and preparing presentations one of the best of things I can think about is really think about why you want to go for the roles that you want to go for and is it for the right reasons because you know a lot of the time it always feels like the grass is always greener but all these jobs they are jobs at the end of the day and particularly when you're moving into say a London based role there's a lot of articles at the moment talking about uh, you know grueling hours and people moving out of the investment bank industry people moving out of corporate you know legal roles and uh, you know work-life balance is a big one and trading your life in to work longer hours doing you know analysis of companies might not be the thing that you actually want to do so really think about whether it's a job that you're interested in if you are interested in it start doing what you need to do today to get that role hopefully that's in entertaining informative if you like this video like it subscribe to my channel for more career support investment type videos on the weekdays thanks for watching bye 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 bye